Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, four wines in front of me, two Sauvignon Blancs, uh, two Gruner Veltliners. What have they got in common? Uh, well, I've only got two of each of them to taste, so I thought I'd put them in together. And uh, hopefully they're both on that crisp, summery, seafoody type uh, uh, mould. Uh, perfect for a uh, really soggy wet day out there but uh, when it's about four degrees but never mind let's just dig in first one i've got uh, the, the two um the two grunewald leaners are both from um, lawrence moser the fifth um and we just put lawrence five on, on on his labels this is the 2012 charming grunewald leaner Camptal reserve give it a whirl it smells young, fresh, stony. At the moment, the fruit isn't jumping out and sort of saying hello, um, but um, what there is, is this uh, slightly salty, savoury intensity. And it feels like it's going to have uh, one of those that maybe the fruit doesn't overwhelm you with flavour, but it's going to have a nice texture, it's going to have a freshness, and it's going to have this savoury element that makes you think, I want some more of that. And when you come to taste it, uh, you get this apple -y uh, pear cut, the pear-like character coming in, uh, a bit of the citrus grip, um, and then underneath there's this uh, undercurrent of um, you know, this slightly saline mineral edge. Um, I'm amazed. That, I mean, it, it, it's uh, November. Well, it's November on Thursday. Um, uh, so nearly November from, and this is um, a, a year old. It still feels really young, uh, closed, as if there is going to be a little bit more wine coming out as it uh, as it opens up. I'll try it again later and see if it's uh, if more of it comes out of its shell. At the moment, it's looking good, but I think it's going to be better in a few months. Um, it's. Um, I don't know, older brother, if you want to call it that, uh, next wine, 2012 Silver Bullet Gruner. Again, Camptal Reserve, and again, 2012 vintage. Let's give this one a whirl. Half a degree higher in alcohol, and it smells like it's going to be a richer, fuller wine, but still with some of that uh, salty, briny uh, bite to it. Uh, I get more of the classic lentil and uh, yes, it's strange. It's uh, uh, as Gruner gets riper. Uh, if, if it's if it's on the unripe side, not unripe, but less ripe side, it's this citrusy character. As it gets riper and riper, it gets peachy all the way through. Uh, notes of pepper, notes of lentils. Get them more here than on the previous one. But as I said, the previous one did feel like it had a bit of uh, coming out of its shell to do. Anyway, let's taste this one. Yeah, and a lot bigger, fuller, richer. It was only half a degree more in alcohol, but you would get a wine with a lot more presence and bite. Uh, there's a juiciness about it, uh, but there's this, it's a dry, savoury finish as well. Uh, a really nice contrast. So, uh, uh, yes, you think it's going to be that little bit too voluptuous and peachy, but then uh, the salinity kicks in and uh, reigns it all in, holds it together, and uh, makes you think, I'll come back for more. Maybe the first one's the seafood wine, maybe that one's uh, a little bit more. Uh, get your nice roast chicken with... Uh, uh, some morel or some really nice mushrooms and creamy sauce and and enjoy. Gonna have another sip. Like that. Um, okay, the two Sauvignons, uh, both Southern Hemisphere but different countries. Um, a New Zealander and a Chilean. So we'll start off with a New Zealander because uh, it's half a degree in alcohol lower. And it's Marlborough uh, for the Grey Wacky 2012. Sauvignon Blanc. The Grey Wacky is the label uh, that uh, Kevin Judd set up when he left Cloudy Bay. Golly, I almost don't have to lift that up to my nose. Very aromatic. And it starts off and it's got these, um, uh, it's got the, the, the bit of the gooseberry. But it's this black currant leaf character coming through. I mean, Sauvignon uh, Blanc is a parent of Cabernet Sauvignon, so not surprising that um, you you might get a similar type of character, but odd to find black currant uh, in, a, in a white wine. Um, but it's got this yeah, juiciness and it's got, it feels like it's going to have this uh, freshness um, at full flavour, but it doesn't feel like the fruit's gone into that slightly over-the-top, peachy, uh, just a slightly excessive and top-heavy, oily, tropical fruit spectrum. It smells like it's going to be quite rich, but fresh with it. Oh, it's fascinating to see the way in, uh, in which Marlborough Sauvignon uh, is evolving. It used to be that, that it was like there were about three or four, four wines made each year, and it seemed like there were 25, 30, 100 different labels uh, under, under which, which each one appeared. But now you're starting to get differences in the different vineyards coming through, different wine-making techniques. Here, um, it's not, as I said it, from the smell of it, it's not one of those uh, voluptuous, in-your-face, fruity wines. There is a richness and... Uh, uh, and, and class to the fruit, apples, black currants, weird gooseberries, um, 
and uh, maybe less of that herbal, um, herbaceous tang that, uh, that, uh, that some of them have and more of, um, uh, more of a tightness and um, yeah, again, the, this word minerality comes in there. There is something of the soil there. Uh, I, actually, I don't know, I'm not quite sure whereabouts uh, Grey Wacky is, but um, uh, Grey Wacky is a type of soil uh, and I think it's decomposed shale or something like that. I, I, I'm not sure, but it's not, it's not those, I don't think it's those big Wairau uh, pebbles. Uh, so it's, um, it's one of those that is almost, uh, Chardonnay, uh, so Sauvignon for shabbily drinkers. Uh, not, it's not bounding out and going rah. It's it's a bit more, a uh, bit more subtle and uh, very very tasty. And there are some of those ever so slightly catty notes there in the background, but um, they're just things elements in with uh, uh, quite a lot of other rather nice flavours. Let's see if it can be um, eclipsed by the final wine, which is from a round series, Aconcagua Costa Sauvignon Blanc 2012. Let's give this one a whirl. Another one that's a bit dumb and stony, that slight smell of river pebbles, which have been quite close to the sea, so they get a little bit of that uh, salty uh, character coming coming into them. Uh, it's more citrus and green apple than, than uh, the black currenty characters that I was getting in, in, in the Grey Wacky. And it feels like it's going to be uh, a little more sleek and slender, but maybe um, a little more simple. Let's see. And it is sleek and slender, but it does have this uh, uh, quite um, rich is the wrong word. It quite uh, intense fruit. So it's got the citrus. It's got a little bit of um, something that's veering towards the exotic. Things like guava in there, maybe even a touch of rhubarb, uh, and um, uh, a different type of uh, soil t character. I was talking about that uh, that river pebble um, uh, aroma. I, I'm getting that when I taste it. Um, it's it's the one that it, it feels like um, my, it's, it's getting my lips uh, smacking. Uh, it feels like I, I, if, if that's natural acidity, it's, it's great to have it, it, it in that beautiful, crisp, pristine style. Um, Favourite of those two, I probably just about prefer the Grey Wacky, but um, it, this is a wine that feels like it needs again. It needs it's it's uh, getting coming up for a year and a half old, but. Um, Still feel like like there are a few elements that uh, need to um, uh, to fully uncurl, um, and um, I've enjoyed these four wines. I mean, I, I toss up between the Grey Wacky and the Silver Bullet, which is my favourite, but um, I very happily drink any of them this evening. Uh, just shame about the weather. <laughs> See you soon.